Hi, this is Michael Gillis, the Gillis team at Remax Legacy. Going into springtime, uh, we get the question a lot about, uh, is it smarter for me to buy right now or to rent right now? And the answer to that question is, is always going to be, it depends on your situation. And so today I'm going to give you a couple of things to think about as you're trying to answer that question. A recent Fed report said that long-term homeowners have as much as a 36 times higher net worth than long-term renters. Now, the important thing to know there is that if you put yourself in the right situation when you're buying a house, long-term, it usually is a good decision. Now, the flip side of that is there are times when you absolutely should not be a buyer and renting something is a lot better option. So I'm going to go through a couple things today to give you an idea of what you should be thinking about as you answer that. The question you want to ask yourself before you go into anything else is, am I ready financially? And there are a couple of things that, uh, you know, that are specifics that, uh, that a lender can help you with. And that's, uh, you know, what, what is my, what is my debt ratio? What does my credit look like? If you know that, you know, well, I, I had some, some medical bills and, uh, and I'm working through that, um, that may be something that you want to work on before you go into the home buying process. Um, if you know that you've got uh, a lot of debt, um, you know, whether it's from student loans or, or something like that, a lot of times that can be something that's really smart to work on uh, before you go into that home buying process. Now, if that means that you're renting for a couple of years while you work through that, that may be a good financial decision. The other thing is, am I in an overall stable financial position? So do I have an emergency fund? Am I, uh, am I able to take care of uh, an emergency issue with the house if, uh, if it comes up? One of the great things about renting is the landlord takes on all of that responsibility. Um, so you don't, uh, you, you don't have the long-term gain that you would have if you owned the home but you don't have that short-term pain of, you know, well, this appliance went out, the water heater blew, um, you know, there was a, a leak in the roof, those sorts of things. And so before you buy a home and you, and you take on those obligations, you want to make sure that you've got that emergency fund and that overall you're in a good, solid financial position so that you don't buy a home and then end up really strapped because some of those things came up uh, not too long afterwards. Once you have thought about that and, uh, and you feel like you're in a good, solid financial position, the next thing you should do is you should talk to a lender. You know, these are professionals uh, that are there to make sure that, that you're making good financial decisions. They can give you some specifics. You know, is, is my debt ratio where it needs to be? Uh, a lender may say, hey, look, your credit is in great shape. Um, you make uh, plenty of money to afford the type of house that you're looking for, but what you really need to do is you need to take these two loans and pay them down uh, in order to qualify. And so there are some really good specifics that a lender can give you once you've gotten to the point where you know, you've got that emergency fund and you know you're in a solid financial position. So uh, when you get to that point, talking to a good reputable lender is one of the best next steps. The other thing that the lender is going to help you answer is, do I have a down payment uh, that's required? Um, and how much is that down payment? In our area, uh, we've got such a huge military presence that uh, that the VA loan allows a lot of those uh, a lot of those people uh, to uh, move forward without requiring a down payment. It's one of the big big benefits um, of uh, of having served in the military or being active duty. Um, and so, if you don't have that VA loan eligibility, you need to have an idea on what your options are. Um, how much money am I going to need? based on the loan program that the lender is advising that I move forward with. And that can be anywhere from zero. Uh, there are programs at 3.5% down, 5% down, and then you can get into a, a full conventional loan at 20% down. So you want to you wanna be mindful of the fact that you don't necessarily need a full 20% down to be able to buy a house, um, but you want to know what it is that you need based on the loan program that you're going to work. The last thing, and maybe most importantly, um, is how long are you going to be in that home? You may be in a great financial position. Uh, you may have no issue qualifying for, uh, for a mortgage. You may have the money for a down payment. But if you're going to be somewhere just a year, 18 months, two years, 
you really want to think hard about what your long-term plan is. If, uh, if your plan is, is to live in that house for, for a year or, or two years um, and then rent it and you know, create a long-term asset, uh, put tenants in the house, um, make sure that you're, you're, you're able to take care of any issues that, that come along, that can be a great decision. But if you're buying thinking that you, you're going to need to sell that home in 18 months, two years, you know, you want to be mindful of the fact that the market may not have increased enough in that short amount of time to, uh, to cover the expenses to sell. And so uh, there's a lot more there that we can get into uh, pertaining to your particular situation. So if you have this question, should I buy, should I rent? Feel free to give us a call. We'd love to help you through that process and try and have you make a, uh, a good financial situation uh, or a, a financial decision for your current situation. Give us a call. Uh, we'd love to talk to you. Thanks.